Hey peeps, welcome to another video. Today I'm going to be doing a mini tutorial on how I made this drawstring or cord or I suppose giant rouleau loop for my dress. There are many, many different ways of doing this and this is just one way that I've discovered that works for me. Now, you can make sort of larger ties as I've done here. You can also use it to make narrow rouleau loops. However, with the narrow ones, you don't wanna be doing anything that's, that's longer than 12 inches. Ask me how I know. These 12 inches work really well if you want to make button loops and things like that. I have used that method in the past, but turning it through the string if it's any longer than 12 inches does get incredibly difficult. Again, ask me how I know. Let's get started. For this tutorial, you're going to need fabric, string, matching thread, scissors, and a sewing machine. Okay, so the first thing that you want to do is cut yourself a strip, usually around about an inch to an inch and a half wide. The finished rouleau loop or loop or string that you're gonna be making won't be that wide, but I find it easier to work with more fabric and cut it away than it is to manipulate smaller pieces of fabric, especially with something as flimsy as this rayon. So what I like to do, uh, you can obviously cut those on the bias as well. If you do cut rouleau loops on the bias, you need to hang them and let them drop so that the bias stretches out before you use them, especially if you're gonna use them for straps. For my purposes, I'm actually going to cut this one on the straight grain because that is going to more than add adequately serve my needs. So the first thing I'm going to do is rather than draw, try and draw on this and cut this in a straight line, I'm actually going to make a snip about the width that I want and I'm eyeballing this. So I'm going to make a snip into the selvage and then I am going to tear, hopefully, my strip. And this means that my strip will be torn on grain and will definitely be straight. And this is another reason that I've gone for a wider strip than I need because this is not kind to the edges of the fabric that you're using. But you can see here, this was a previously ripped piece and this is the piece that I've just ripped at the bottom there. And it's nice and even and straight the entire way along. This will not work for every single fabric, so you may wish to try and test this before you do it. But if it does work for your fabric, this is a really good way of making sure that you get a piece of fabric that is the exact same width the entire way along, especially with a slippery one like this. I know trying to cut this with a rotary cutter, I would have ended up with it very wonky. So the next thing that we're gonna do is take this to our sewing machine and make some loops. So my ties aren't gonna be quite long enough, so I'm going to need to join them together. You could just sew the straight ends together, but you end up with a very bulky part, so I have done it like you would a strip of bias. So the important thing to note is that I've overlapped there and there, and I'm sewing from corner to corner. And so when I go and press this and trim all that excess off, the seam or the edge will be nice and even, and that will help turn this through a little easier than if we had made a straight seam. So I'm gonna go press this, trim all of this, this excess off here, and then we can start sewing. So if you want to make really narrow rouleau loops, you're not going to want to do really long lengths of this because it's not easy or even viable to turn it through the, using this method, it will take too long. But if you just need like a couple of button loops, say three for a sleeve or the back of a neckline or something like that, this is a really good method for doing that. So you want to lie your fabric right side up and then you're gonna take the string and you're going to make a sandwich of the fabric by folding the edges of the fabric over together with the string in the middle. And you want the string to be in nice and butted up against the edge of the fabric. And I have my regular zipper foot on and I've got my needle moved all the way over to the left. And I'm gonna sew as close as I can to the string. And the other thing you wanna make sure that you're doing is you're leaving a nice tail of the string at the top and don't pull this, this is very important because we need to sew over this before we pull it. And I like to sit with the ball of string in my lap and feed it through from there. Sometimes if you're doing the longer ones, you don't know how long you're gonna have them or how much string you need and I just find it easier to do that. I do that with most products like this, like bias binding and twill tape and things like that. So I'll start sewing and show you what I mean. Okay, so I've backstitched at the start, and as you can see, I think you can see, I've got a nice long thread tail over there. So I'm just meet, matching up the raw edges of the fabric, and I'm butting the string up against this edge of my zipper foot, and I am just sewing a line of straight stitches along here and as I say just keeping the fabric edges matched up. Backstitch when you get to the end. Now you want to be very careful when you're taking this off the sewing machine because we haven't secured it as yet. So you want to secure the string in at the uh, end where you started. So I'm gonna 
do it this way actually so I've got a bit of a, a bit of lead in so I'm going to go backwards and forwards over the string to make sure that it's securely attached to the fabric okay so the next thing that we want to do is trim off all of this excess which I'm going to do with my pinking shears and you want to be pinking close to that stitching line now as I mentioned earlier I like to work with more fabric than less because I find it much less fiddly and I find it that it's going to behave itself and do what I want it to do a little bit easier trim off all these excess threads again I'm doing this in the viewfinder which is always fun so this is the tricky bit and this is the bit that we found it's very difficult to get this started but once you have got it started it does work you're wanting to pull the fabric back on itself and I'm actually going to chop off this end here I've secured it to the string so fingers crossed it won't unsecure we shall see but yeah you want to you kind of want to roll this over the end and you can pull on the other end of the string and once it gets started it's much much easier it's just getting it started just want to keep working at it this is why you don't want to do great big long ones of these I have um, tried loop turners the uh, blunt needles being threaded back through Lots of different things but this one I found that you can get the narrowest relay loops if you can get it started you don't want to bunch up too much fabric because then it can be get jammed again ask me how I know and the other thing you want to be careful of as well there we go we've got it started the other thing that you want to be careful of as well is the not getting everything twisted because that will also make it more difficult to turn the loop through I am um, showed this trick to mum for a tie for a top and we tried to do a really long one and it, it took hours to turn it through and it was just really stressful so that's why I'm saying don't do it for anything sort of more than a few rouleau loops for buttonholes and things like that but once you've turned it through you can cut the string off cut the excess threads off and then you have a nice narrow rouleau loop that you can make buttonholes out of I mean I did it with a let's see this is six inches long this this bit of fabric and you could probably get depending on the size of your buttons you could probably get about two or three or maybe two two or three loops out of this this trick works really well for narrower pieces as you can see I'm going to show you the same method but to make a wider string which you can then use for a dress tie like I did for the McCall's 7537 okay, this time I'm doing exactly the same thing but I've moved my needle over and it's as close to the bar of my foot as I can get it without it hitting the bar and that just means that I'm sewing further away from the string it's allowing me to sew it equally because I still have the edge of the foot butted up against the string and I'm still making the raw edges meet so I've backstitched at the beginning and again I have my tail of string up there that I haven't at attached yet so you don't want to pull on your string just take your time reposition make sure that you're happy with where everything is lying remember to not pull on your string stitch at the end and again very careful when you're taking this off the machine because you haven't secured your string as yet so I'm going to secure the string in place you want to back stitch and just sew over the string backwards and forwards really securing that in place okay so once you've secured that in place you want to trim off this excess here and then we're going to take the pinking shears and trim down the seam allowance nice and close to our stitching line to help us turn it through and it also help when you're turning it through to not quite get so shredded and again try and do this in the viewfinder without cutting things that I'm not meant to be cutting ask me how I know 
So I've left this on the, I haven't cut the end, this end of the string off as yet because you don't really need to. So what we need to do is take hold of the string and we're going to feed the fabric back on itself down to this end. And again, it's once it's started, it's so much easier, it's getting it started. You need a little bit of slack so that you can hold onto the string and push the fabric over because this is much looser than the previous very narrow loop that we did, it should be slightly easier in theory. A bit more slack. And again, you want to be careful not to bunch the fabric up too much because then it gets stuck. You don't want to twist the fabric as you're pushing it down the string because again, it'll get twist, it'll get stuck. Gently pull it over that initial starting point there we go and then now this is why the this is why the tighter one doesn't work so well on a longer thing because when you pull it down like this the fabric naturally wants to twist and as I said that's not what you want because it will stuck on itself so you want to kind of feed it along like so and just give yourself a little bit more it along and repeat. So I'm holding onto the string and then feeding the excess fabric over itself. You end up with lots of little sheddy, sheddy bits from all the, bi the bias that you've cut from the pinking shears but that's fine. I've got it a little bit too bunched up there. And as I said everybody has their preferred method of turning loops like this. This is just something that works for me. So and it doesn't involve having to buy fancy bits of equipment. Once you get to the point uh, where you've got enough through, you can hold on to the end of the string and just kind of pull with your fingers and then it will start to come through, as you can see here. There we go. So, I mean, it's still fairly narrow. It's not like it's a giant, thick loop that you could have turned through, you know, like fed back on itself with a safety pin or anything. So it's still a nice kind of size but as I say this is just a way that I have found that works for me. So you cut off the string and then I use my purple pokey thing to kind of feed the raw ends back in on themselves because you're going to want to either by hand or by machine run some stitches over the end to make sure that all the raw edges are enclosed. This is a good way of, in theory, it has, it does work, trust me, trust me I'm a seamstress. Getting that nicely enclosed. You want to feed it back on itself a little bit like that and then as I say you can either hand stitch or machine stitch this end and then you end up with a nice loop that you, I use this for the ties on my McCall 75 three seven as ever if you have any questions at all please let me know in the comment section down below and i will do my best to answer them for you if you've enjoyed this video please give it a thumbs up if you haven't yet please subscribe and i'll see you again very soon bye